To conclude uh, lesson one, let us do an exercise just to uh, review what we have done with the use of an example. We are going to be looking at an example where essential oil, uh, essential oils is to be extracted from biomass by means of uh, TCB as a solvent. Uh, we are leaching in a single stage extractor. The extractor is to treat a thousand kilogram of biomass, which is now a combined uh, biomass with oil. The untreated biomass contains 350 kilogram of essential oil and is, and is contaminated with uh, 30 kilogram of uh, the solvent TCB. The solvent feed contains 15 kilogram of oil and uh, it contains 675 kilogram of TCB, which is uh, the pure solvent. So it, uh, the solvent, the fresh feed solvent now has uh, some solute in it. The experimental data indicating how the solution retained depends on the concentration of the solution is given in the table below. We also told to assume that the equilibrium for the system is for that of y equals to x type, which means that our tie lines will be vertical. Uh, this is uh, the equilibrium information that is given. We are given the concentration of uh, oil over the concentration of, uh, so we are given the kilogram. We are given y, which is the concentration which we are given y, which is the concentration of oil in the solution. And also we are given the solution retained, which is the kilogram of solution per kilogram of solid biomass in the slurry. We can continue to interpret the given information as follows. We know that the feed slurry is uh, the total of a thousand kilogram, which contains 350 kilogram of oil, which is solute A. And then it it is also contaminated with uh, 30 kilogram of the solvent TCB, which is component C. And the remainder of that is uh, the solids B, which, is, uh, which can be calculated to be 620 kilograms. The solvent, the solvent feed contains um, 15 kilogram of oil, which is solute A, and 675 uh, of solvent, which is uh, TCB, which is component C. The solution in the underflow stream uh, is given the, the equilibrium is given uh, as n the we are given equilibrium which uh, is uh, the value of k versus uh, y n can be read of the table but we should be careful to note that the given values are not of n they are of k which is 1 over n if you look back at it you can see that what we are given here is the mass of solution over mass of solids and remember that N is mass of solids over mass of solution. So this is the 1 over N, which is, if you remember from uh, the theory in lesson 1, that 1 over N is sometimes given as K. The first step that you can do is to calculate N from the given values of K, remembering that N is equal to 1 over K. What we have done here, we have just uh, taken the table, and uh, we have calculated the values of n now by just making n to be 1 over k. The mass of components in the solid slurry uh, can be fully determined. We know that A is 350 kilograms, solids B is 620, solvent is 30 kilograms. We can calculate the solution, which is LO, which is uh, the, solvent, uh, the solvent plus the solute which we get to be 380 kilogram. The composition of solute in the solution uh, entrained in the slurry, which is uh, the composition of solute in LO, can be calculated by just uh, dividing the mass of solute by the total mass of solution, which we can get it to be 0 0.92. The holdup of solutes in the solution entrained in the slurry, as we said, this sound a bit uh, counterintuitive because actually it is the solution it is uh, the solution that is entrained, but we are saying the solids hold up. So the value of N, which we know is the total mass of solids divided by the mass of solution, it's always that ratio can be calculated, which uh, we know the mass of solids, which is 620, and the mass of solution in the feed slurry, then we can find the value of NO. This will give us the coordinates for LO, which we can plot on our uh, operating diagram. Next, we need to calculate the mass of components and compositions for the solvent uh, feed, this stream here. 
we know the mass of solute is given as 15 kilogram the solvent is free of solids and we are given the solvent flow or the solvent content or amount in that uh, solvent feed stream so the total solution can be calculated as the addition of the solute and that of the solvent which becomes 690 kilogram the composition of solute in the solvent feed can be calculated which is just the mass of solute divided by the mass of solution then we can calculate x2 which we get it to be 0 0.02 then we can calculate the holdup of solids. Remember the solvent feed does not have any solids, so B will always be zero, so which will give you zero. And as you know, this point always lies on the x-axis. The coordinates for V1 are now uh, determined, which we know is X2 and N2. Oh, sorry, it is, um, this is for, for V2, for V2, sorry, not V1, which we know is X2 and N2, which are 0 0.02 and 0. We can use the material balance to solve the problem further. Uh, what we can do is we can do the overall material balance by looking at the incoming stream, combining to form some sort of mixture M, and then that mixture M separating to form the outgoing stream. So the incoming stream, they are combined to form M, and M separates to form the outgoing streams. Since we know the incoming streams, we can calculate the value of M, which is the total uh, solution flow, which we calculated to be 1070 kilogram. Then we can do component balance on M by just finding the solute that comes with LO and the solute that comes with V2 will be the solute in M. By solving this equation as XM is the only unknown, we can find the value of XM to be 0.34. Next, we do the solid balance on M. We know all the solids that come in here. They are the only solids that are in M. So B, which is the solids in M, will be the ratio of solutes, the ratio of solids, solids in M, which is an M multiplied by the mass of M. Remember N, N M is mass of solids divided by mass of solution and mass of solution is m if you multiply that you end up with mass of solids so from there we can rearrange this equation to find an m which is the ratio of solids to the solution in the mixture m which we get it to be 0.58 then we can plot this point m on the n versus xy diagram which is our operating diagram with the coordinates that we have just calculated Remember this step-by-step uh, -step, uh, uh, graphical demonstration of the solution that we have reviewed in lesson one. We will, I will be taking you through this graphically step-by-step. -step. The first stay, the first step is to plot the equilibrium. The first step is to plot the equilibrium curve, which is the n versus y, as we have plotted here. And remember that the n versus x is always along the x-axis because of we have the vertical tie lines in the equilibrium y is equal to x. Next, we know that xm is equal to x1 and y1 because the solution that is in m separates to form L1 and V1. The solutions the solution leaving the stage will always uh, the, the solution and train in the underflow and the solution in the overflow have the same concentration so we can plot those coordinates for l1 m and v1 note that the concentration of l1 that is y1 is on the n versus y curve this curve here and we find the N1 to be 1.8 and then as we have calculated uh, Y1 to be 0.34 and then the concentration of V1 is on the N is equals to zero line which is along the X axis. Step three is to position uh, point LO 
which is uh, the coordinates uh, Y naught and L naught, which is 0.92 and 1.6. Then we have to position the solvent feed V2 at the coordinates that we have calculated. Then we can draw the line joining this, those two because we know those two combine to form mixture M. So mixture M has to be along this line. Then we can draw the line joining uh, point V1 to L1 because mixture M separates to form L1 and V1. What we have first, we have LO mixing with uh, V2 to form M and then M separating into these two streams. We can now complete the solution uh, by doing the material balance, starting off with the total solution balance, as we have said, the outgoing streams will all come from the combined stream M1, that is the solution balance. So the solution in M separates into the solution in V1 and the solution in L1. So since we know V1, since we know L1, no, we don't know any of this, but what we can do is we can express V1 in terms of L1. Then next, we can do the overall solid balance because we know the solid that we have is all in the underflow. So when we do the solid balance, we only focus on the, the underflow. We know that the solid is always B and it gets carried across, which is the solid that is in the mixture and the solid that is in the underflow and the solid that is in the slurry. If we take this part of the equation, the only unknown here will be L1. We know N1, we know Nm, we know M, then we can use this equation to solve for L1. Once we have L1, we can use our uh, the earlier equation where we are relating V1 to L1, then we can solve for V1, which will give us the flow of L1. What you can also do here is you can use uh, uh, the lever arm rule, the inverse lever arm rule to solve this equation, where you can use uh, the ruler to measure the line segments to calculate uh, the respective flows of L1 and V1. You know that this line segment L1 V1 mm -hmm. is equals to the total mixture M1 and this line segment L1 M1 is equals to the V1 mixture. Mm -hmm. As always in the inverse arm rule, it will always be the one on the opposite end. And then M1 V1 will give you L1. Sorry, M V1 will give you L1. By using those ratios, you can use the line segments to calculate the flows uh, by measuring those line segments with a ruler. Since uh, the line that we're dealing with is a vertical line, we can use the Y dimension units as measurements or the grid measurements units instead of a ruler, which means that the line L1 V1 will be the unit of the Y axis, which will be 1.8. And the line L1 M1 will be this whole line segment minus M V1. And we know M V1 would be 0.8. So then L1 M can be calculated by just finding the difference, which is 1.22. In this situation, you don't need a ruler because you have a vertical line. You can just use the X axis, so, sorry, the Y axis to read the values. This is a very clever cheat to use in a test or exam. If given a graph paper, you can just use the grid of the graph paper to measure the line segment in grid units. So if you're given a graph paper, you would have drawn this and then they, you would use the units of the graph paper to do the line segments. This will always give you a very accurate uh, measurement. As you can see, the values that we have correspond squarely with the ones that we calculated with the mass balance because of the fact that we are not using ruler measurements, which are always inaccurate in some way. This concludes uh, the exercise and I hope that that clarifies and shows the application of a single stage leaching that we have learned in lesson one.